Good afternoon and welcome back to Mailer's Landing. Passover is done and in the books for 2021 and you know what that means. It's time to bake some bread. So I have a very well-loved recipe that came off of um, Michael Ruhlman's site a few years ago. It has not failed me. This is a great recipe. Today we're gonna make a biga. Um, and this will sit overnight and yeast itself up and do its magic and then tomorrow morning we'll come back and we'll start baking it into bread. We're going to begin with 400 grams of all-purpose flour. Additionally, this recipe calls for a tablespoon each of rye flour and whole wheat flour. So we're going to measure that in. Simple tablespoon. There's our rye. And there's our whole wheat. So this recipe calls for a very scant amount of yeast. Um, tomorrow when we do the bread, we're gonna add yeast and wholesale into it. Today we're gonna add a quarter teaspoon of yeast. Scrambled up in one cup of warm water. And I have a, another cup full of lukewarm water. And I'm gonna add a tablespoon of this yeasted water. Now, the original recipe only calls for a teaspoon. I like a little more in there. Makes me feel more confident. And we're gonna just discard this. Don't do that. Okay, so here are our flowers, all in there. There's not a whole lot going on. We've got 400 grams of all-purpose flour. We've got a tablespoon each of the rye flour and the whole wheat flour. And now we're just gonna add some water. And this has our one tablespoon of yeasted water in it. So let's get our meticulously clean hands into this mess. and we're gonna get this nice shaggy dough. You can see that there, and you can see why they call it shaggy. So what I'm going to do is turn this out onto the table and kind of knead it together a little in the bucket and finish kneading it together on the table. And that's the last of the kneading that you're gonna to have to do through this whole recipe. This is classified as a no-knead dough or a no-knead bread. So you're not gonna be doing any of this later. You will, though, tomorrow be stirring it a lot. <laughs> but again, it's not, an, it's not a kneaded dough. So while we'll be fussing with it, this today will be the hardest work you do on this dough. Okay, and we've got our little ball of dough here. You can see it's not smooth at all, and that's okay. It's a little bit sticky, um, and it's going to rest overnight at room temperature in the bucket, and we'll revisit this in the morning and turn it into bread. Magic. Good morning, welcome back. We have made our biga. It has rested on the counter overnight and we're ready to start turning this stuff into bread. So the very first thing we're going to do is get our biga out of the bucket. See, she's still pretty sticky, which is great. We want that. Okay, so look how much it's smoothed out just from the rest overnight. Look at that beautiful biga. She's stretchy and squishy. The original recipe says at this point to cut it up into six or seven pieces. I have found that I far prefer how this comes out when I cut it up into much smaller pieces. It just, there's um, more consistency in the dough for me. 
So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut it up into these little, I wouldn't say bite-sized pizzas, but they're like a pretzel nugget, you know? Put this all right in here. That's gonna take a minute. All right, so we have everybody in here. Vega has been cut into these lovely, lovely small sized bits. I'm gonna pour two cups of warm water right over that. And it doesn't matter if everybody's submerged or not. That's just gonna sit while we get our ingredients together. We need some flour, some salt, and some yeast. I have measured out 430 grams of all-purpose flour. And then we're going to add to that one tablespoon of salt and a teaspoon of yeast. You can see I put those on different sides of the bowl. Um, if you apply the salt directly to the yeast, it's gonna kill the yeast. So we're gonna do this quick enough that nothing matters, but yeah, I like to set them in there on opposite sides of the, the bowl. So to our biga, we're going to add our salt and yeast and flour. I'm just going to mix this up. You can see she's pretty lumpy. Um, I'm just trying to get it so that the water is incorporated at this point. I'm not really worried about the texture yet. So this is where we're at right now. It's not that smooth at all. That's going to happen over the course of the next few hours. We are going to let this rest for 20 minutes and then we're gonna come back and give it a good stir. And we're gonna do that four times. So a whole bunch of people have said to me when they've seen this in my kitchen, What's with all the marks on here? Well, we're gonna keep track of how many times we stir this <laughs> because if I had to remember that nonsense off the top of my head, this, this would sit on the counter all day long. <laughs> um, so the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the alarm on my phone and we'll be back in 20 minutes and give her a stir then. Okay, so it's been 20 minutes and we are back to give the bread its first stir. So I'll have you take a look at this. We're still really bumpy in here, and that's okay. We're gonna be doing this for a little while. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm just grabbing the bottom of the bread and tucking it onto the top. and Just giving it a good stir. I think the recipe describes it as just pulling the edges away from the sides, so. And there hasn't been a whole lot of smoothing action so far. In fact, you can still see here and a few other places, you can still see the chunks from where we cut that biga up before we added the stuff to it. So I'm going to set this aside, pop a lid on it, make a mark on my paper, and I'll see you in 20. Ding, 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 round two, and we're back. So come have a look at this bread. Okay, so the dough has changed a little bit. It's smoothed out just a touch. I'm gonna give it another good stir here. Oh yeah, that's really coming together. You can see that most of the lumps um, from the biga have started to smooth into the mixture. A couple here and there, but it's all coming together. My goodness. Okay. All right, have a look at that beauty. So we're going to give her another 20 minutes. I'm going to put another mark on the paper. And when we come back, we'll do it again. Okay, we're back with round three. 
and the bread dough has smoothed out remarkably. Have a look. You can see how much nicer and smoother that is in there. So we're gonna give it a third stir. Oh my goodness, this is gorgeous. I hope you can see how beautiful and stretchy this is getting. So there we are, and I'll see you in another 20 minutes. <laughs> Welcome back. We are ready to do our final stir on our lovely bread dough, and then it's going to sit for an hour and a half. So come look at this. It looks so good, y'all. Look how nice and smooth it's becoming. We've still got some nice big lumps, but we also have beautiful air pockets going on in here. Let's see how stretchy this is getting. Lovely, lovely stretchy. So. All right, so we're gonna set the timer for an hour and a half. I'll meet you back here, and I'll show you how to shape the loaves after that. So, and we're back. We've done our final rise. It has been an hour and a half. And now we're gonna shape these loaves and get them ready to go right into the oven. Um, they're gonna have another 45 minute rest before they go to the hot plate. And we will have gotten our oven ready at that point. It's 450 degrees. There are gonna be two things that go in the oven before. One thing is the pan that you're going to put your loaves on. And the other thing is a shallow pan that we're gonna fill about three quarters of the way with water. So when you preheat your oven at 450 degrees, the water will already be in there along with the pan. That makes a really nice environment for our bread. It's gonna create a great steam bath to give our bread a nice crunchy crust. I have also prepared in advance some cutting boards with some parchment paper on it. And that's where our bread's gonna do its final rest. So we're going to start by liberally flouring our surface. Okay. Remember, this dough is pretty sticky, um, so you want to get the flour on your hands as well. Onto our nice floured surface, we're going to turn out our dough. Oh, she looks good. She looks really good. You look really good. All right. Here's our dough and she is beautiful. She's just like I want her to be. This recipe makes two loaves. So let's cut this in half. Just using my handy dandy bench scraper here. And then I want to show you how this gets shaped. So stretchy and springy. All right, so what we're gonna do is grab from one end, fold it over. We're gonna grab from the, the side and fold it over. And then once more, like that. And we've made a nice, neat little packet. And I'm just gonna place it right over here on our parchment. Okay, and let's do the same thing for this side. Cross, over, whoop, <laughs> and once more across. And then I'm just going to transfer the whole thing right over to our parchment. So here are our beautiful loaves. I just want you to see them. And they were super simple. We just folded it over a couple of times. And we're going to let that rise here for another 45 minutes, and then it's into the oven with them. About half an hour into the process, I'm going to preheat my oven to 450 degrees, which sounds like an obscenely high temperature, right? But hey, you roast a chicken at that temperature, and you make a beautiful bread at that temperature. Um, so I'm going to come back in a little bit, get the oven ready, and I will see you in 45 minutes. Okay, welcome back. Our dough has been rising, doing its last 45 minutes. I've trimmed the parchment down, and you can see 
it's risen pretty well. It has, this loaf has risen outward as opposed to upward. That's totally fine. We're gonna get some really nice bread out of that anyway. Um, so the oven is preheated to 450. Let's get those loaves in. Okay, so here we are side by side in the oven. They will probably join in the middle and give each other a nice little kiss. So we're gonna check back in about 25 minutes and check its temperature, make sure it's at 200 degrees. See you then. Timer's gone off, bread should be ready. Let's see what's going on here. Ooh, look at that. So you can see how nice that has fluffed up. Listen to this, listen to this. You can see that the water has done its job. We've got a nice crispy crust on this, which is just what we want. Let's get this on. We're at Fahrenheit. And I'm just gonna stick it in right over here in the middle. All right, 202. Two oh six. All right, we are good to go. So I'm going to move it over to a cooling rack, and then we'll come back in 20 minutes, half an hour. It'll still be warm, but it'll be cooled enough that we can cut into it. See you then. All right, husband, we should cut into this lovely loaf. The bread. The bread. Bring me the bread. Oh, oh. It looks like this is gonna have a nice open, oh my goodness, y'all. Look at that gorgeous open crumb. Look at that. It is soft and the outside is still nice and crunchy. Wait, 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 wait. Don't, don't talk over that. <laughs> so you wanna taste test it? I do. All right. That's why I'm here for the right. bread. Would you like butter or would you like this this gorgeous heel all by itself? All by itself. I hand it to you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is gonna be such nice toast. I love this stuff especially as toast. French toast. It makes great French toast. I think does make great French toast. Oh, damn, it's so good out of the oven. Mm. Mm. Well, 20 minutes out of the oven. Mm. And it's so soft. And it's got this beautiful openness to it. It's squishy and dense in all the right places. So, I'm so glad Passover's over, y'all. <laughs> Hit me up with any questions that you've got about this down in the comments and we will catch you up soon. Take care.